Are you struggling to win on FIFA because your team is really bad? Shocking, dreadful, no quality. Do you need coins for a cheeky new team? I need it! Then head over to u7buy.com to get yourself cheap, fast and reliable coins. Click the link in the description and use code Mitchell to get yourself a 6% discount. Alright boys and girls, today is going to be a very, very cheeky day, okay? Today, boys, we're going to be doing another little talking episode, okay? And this time, it's going to be very football-orientated, okay? The last time we did this, talking more about my life, but today, it's just purely about football. Now, before we dive into it, boys, obviously, I want to discuss what we're doing on FIFA today. As usual, I'm just going to build a nice little team and just play with it, okay? I've built most of the team already, as you can see. Most of these cards I've not used before, okay? So, like, for example, it's Sergio Ramos card. I don't know where I got him from, but he was just in the the club so I figured I'd use him. Uh, this Udogi card, he looks very nice and I haven't used him yet. Uh, we got Campos who I've used once before, not on this FIFA. I think it was last FIFA and I absolutely hated him because he's five foot seven, and you know, obviously goalkeepers need a bit of height but you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a go. I've also got Benega in here boys because Benega was really good when I last used him. Peter Crouch as well. We got this Rayton. Ray 10 or something like that. It looks a really nice card to be fair, like really, really good. Again, I don't know where this card come from, but it, it should be pretty nice. As for the other three slots here, guys, we need to fill these in. Okay, so I'm going to jump on the transfer market. I'm just going to pick some cards up. And the main thing I want to talk about today, guys, is the opening weekend of the Premier League. Okay, I watched quite a few games this weekend and I want to dive into them. So first of all, it was Man United versus Fulham, I think. And that was the opening day game. And I'm not going to lie, guys, it was pretty boring. Okay, I was, it was pretty dull. Most of the game was nil nil there was hardly any highlights it was just flooded with like loads of mistakes from both teams like they were just both giving it away all the time so it was a hard difficult game to watch it was a proper snooze fest and to top it all off I thought at the very least Man United were going to drop points and it'd be funny but then they go ahead and score with Xerxes now fair play to Xerxes he came off you know off the bench and he made an instant impact so so fair play to the lad but yeah it was a proper dull game guys okay it nearly sent me to sleep it was not a good opening day weekend game the most exciting part of that game was probably when like Wolves made a big mistake and then it was like a 2v1 against the goalkeeper and they somehow didn't bloody score. Like they missed an open goal pretty much. That was the best part of the game and that's not a good thing. But as I might grab a Stevie G, you know, he's only 15k. But yeah, back on top of it to the Premier League guys, okay. The second game of the weekend was a big one for me at least, okay. It was, why, why is this not coming up? Like he's, he's 11k and it's not coming up. This game is absolutely broken. Like, I, I cannot fucking stand it sometimes. Of course he comes up now. I, I Honestly. Right, Ipswich versus Liverpool, guys. Okay, so the first half, not a good first half. Okay, once again, it was proper boring. And to top it off, we were playing like shit. Okay, it wasn't good. Second half, though, a lot better. Okay, the second half, like, we were playing better. It was more exciting. It was a lot more attacking fluidity. Things were starting to click in the second half. I really liked everything I saw in that second half. It was really good. I was particularly impressed with Trent alexander Iran. He had an absolutely fantastic game. Some of his passing was ridiculous. Okay, that pass for the first goal was exquisite. Like, the weight of pass was just perfect. He also did an absolutely amazing cross as well that Jota should have scored. Like, he normally scores headers, so I was surprised that he didn't bang it. And also, Salah was really good. Okay, got a goal and assist. Okay, just doing what Salah does best. Just always contributing. Just phenomenal. Okay, he, he never ceases to amaze me. And also, I really liked Canate's performance in that second half. He was winning every ball. Okay, he was fantastic in that second half. I do feel a bit bad for Kwanzaa because obviously he only played 45 minutes and Kwanzaa is really good but obviously he's young he's still learning the game but when Kanati's fit he's, he's got to start because he, he is that guy I'm afraid like he is really good. Bloody hell one million coins for Doku. It's a bit much in it like it looks all right he four star weak for as well that's, that's well overpriced in my opinion that's crazy like you can get palmer cold palmer for for 30 all right we're getting palmer that, that, that yeah definitely so yeah the only other game i watched this weekend guys was city versus chelsea and i was expecting that to be absolute fireworks okay i was i was expecting it to be like four or something like just, i thought it would be proper exciting and it was quite dull i'll be honest it was a bit it was a bit underwhelming i, I, I can't lie it definitely had a few moments where there was exciting moments moments okay Chelsea did have a few chances a, a lot of them were ruled for offside like the Nicholas Jackson chance so there was the odd moment where I was like oh yes come on this game might click into place but it was just a bit stop and start you know it didn't quite have that flow that I was expecting because normally Chelsea versus City is really good and I was a little bit underwhelmed it wasn't terrible it just wasn't fantastic you know it was just a bit mid and that kind of gets me on to the topic of today's episode guys okay I want to talk specifically about the excitement of the Premier League 
League, or the lack thereof, because I just feel like it's not quite the same. I'm going to use Morientas, by the way. Uh, I just, you know, I can't, be, I can't be bothered to look for another striker. But yeah, I just feel like in the last few years, the Premier League just hasn't been hitting quite the same. It's obviously going to have some amazing games. It's not like every single game is boring, but it's not quite as good as it used to be. And I feel like as well, like a lot of the really exciting games, it's usually revolving around some bad refereeing, you know, some questionable VAR usage. It seems rare that we actually get to see a game of football that's exciting because of the actual football. Back in the day of like prime Premier League, we had players like Gerrard, Lampard, Ronaldo, you know, when he was up and coming. Even like the not so superstar-esque players were exciting to watch. Like just off the top of my head, Santi Cazorla. Like, he was a little baller. I remember when Newcastle would have people like Hatem Ben Arthur. I remember when Adele Tarat was at QPR. Like, these weren't even, like, the, the you know, these weren't the faces of the Premier League. But they were proper streets will not forget players. They were exciting to watch. And football in general was just more exciting. Because something was always going to happen with these players. Nowadays, I feel like the football is just so robotic, okay? It's all tactical, all right? And I blame that bold man, Pep Guardiola, for all of this. Before Pep Guardiola, the top teams had tons of attack attacking flair, they were doing skills, your players like Nanny, who would just, you know, do crazy shit, and the lower level teams like Stoke and Burnley would just sit at the back and, you know, play dirty and, and do all of the, the dark arts. And then you obviously had teams that were more possession based, but they were more like Arsene Wenger, where it was liquid football, it was nice to watch, it was exciting to, to, to witness it. I feel like nowadays, watching a team play possession is just boring, like there's nothing exciting about it, it's just possession for possession's sake. And it's one thing to see a couple of teams play that way, but it just seems like every team wants to play that way, okay? The lower level teams want to play out the back now. All of the teams want to keep the ball. It's just a bit dull. I want to see a bit more freedom. I want to see somebody like a Stevie G come out of nowhere and just hit a 50-yard volley for just because fuck it. Nowadays, like, you see a player line up a long shot, and then they, they go to hit the shot, but they're like, oh, nah, nah, let's not do that. Let's just pass it. Let's pass it backwards. Oh, I don't know, man. It drives me nuts. Like, I just want to see somebody hit something crazy. Anyway, guys, that's my Premier League rant over with. I just feel like we need a bit more excitement, okay? The opening weekend of the Prem, there hasn't been that really exciting game, in my opinion. Like, not a single game has really, like, hit fire. For fuck's sake, I'm speaking of hitting fire. That's a top ins finish from Jairzinho. I can't fault that. Now, I will say, guys, I am recording this on a Monday, okay? Which means the Leicester versus Tottenham game hasn't happened yet. I mean, that might be a nice game. It could be. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But, yeah, I definitely hope that week two of Premier League is a little bit more exciting. I want to see games, like, really be, like, exciting to watch. Because, you know, Chelsea versus City, I was expecting that game to be, like, a real thriller. You know, lots of goals. And it was just a bit of a... It was a bit of a Man City bashing in the end. Speaking of Man City, guys, I feel like it might be time for controversial football opinion of the week. For those that don't know, every time I talk about football, I'm just going to I'm gonna say something controversial. All right, so you might agree with it, you might not. All right, but my, my controversial opinion this week, Doku is just Adama Traore but slightly better at dribbling. All right, that's my controversial opinion. Now, I will admit, guys, I don't watch every single Man City game ever, so maybe I've just watched bad games for Doku, but every time I watch him, he does really well on the ball, but his end product is absolutely shocking. He literally reminds me of a slightly thinner version of Adama Traore, because Adama Traore does the same shit, all right? He does pretty good at dribbling, not, like, amazingly good, but he's able to beat players, you know, because he's fast and quick and athletic. But then as soon as it comes to end product, it's pants. Every time, it's, it's just bad. That is a beautiful goal. And that Man City versus Chelsea game really highlighted to me that Doku is just kind of exactly the same as Adama Traore. Like, I'd see him do amazing things on the ball, and then he came to making a simple forward pass, and he couldn't fucking do it. And I was going crazy. I'm not even a fucking City fan, and it was driving me crazy, because it was just painful to watch somebody do so well on the ball and then just play the most dog shit passes ever. And obviously this weekend I was hanging out with some of my friends, okay, and one of my friends is a City fan. I know that sounds crazy, like you guys probably can't even believe they exist, but yes, there is at least one City fan and is one of my friends. And my friend really rates Doku, he's, he thinks he's really good and he's only going to get better. And he, and he probably will, to be honest with you, he, he might get better. Right now I don't think he's that great, but yeah. But one thing that he said that kind of drove me nuts was he said that he didn't rate Mares that much, but he rates Doku. 
How the fuck is that possible? Mares was absolutely quality for City, as, as far as I'm concerned. I thought Mares was a very good player, all right? And then, then you got Doku, who's just bang average in my opinion. Like, he's just not that great. So yeah, I don't know how you can prefer Doku to Mares, but yeah, he, he does. And he watches City every week. So maybe he knows something I don't. But I, honestly, I think that's an, a, I think that's a nuts opinion. Nonetheless, that's my controversial opinion of the week, boys. Okay, Doku is just a Dharma Tree or a 2.0. Alright, that, so that might be a bit, bit harsh, but that's what I honestly think. Okay, guys, so speaking of controversial opinions, I did see something on Twitter the other day that honestly just drove me insane. Like, I couldn't believe someone had even tweeted it. Uh, and I'm going to paraphrase here because I can't remember exactly how it went but somebody sort of suggested that Saka has done more for Arsenal than Bale had done for Tottenham right Gareth fucking Bale okay that's a mental opinion in my opinion like Saka's he's all right like I don't think he's a bad player uh, he's, he's very good even I wouldn't call him world class but he's he's good he's a good little player Gareth Bale at Tottenham was absolutely ridiculous forget like statistics for the, for a minute okay because Saka might have more goals and assists than Bale all right I, he, he probably does but the goal catalog that Gareth Bale has not for Real Madrid all right for, forget Real Madrid Bale is is on another planet to Saka but the but Tottenham Gareth Bell even has an insane goal catalogue, okay? And such memorable goals and performances in a Tottenham shirt. I genuinely cannot even remember a single Saka goal. And there's probably some good ones in there, but I can't even I can't think of any of them in my head. And that opinion had to be from somebody that has never watched Gareth Bell at Tottenham, okay? Because he was absolutely different gravy, especially the season before he left for Real Madrid. He was unplayable, okay? The guy was a menace. He would literally get the ball and he wouldn't even be dribbling. I, I wouldn't call it dribbling It's not like Messi where he's got the tight control of that ball He would kick the ball like five yards in front of him and fucking out sprint the player that he's in Like he would just obliterate people with pain. They didn't know what to do with the guy He literally went from left back to one of the most ridiculous right wingers on the planet Prime Gareth Bale was serious business. To compare him to Saka is just a disservice, okay? Because Saka, again, he's a decent player, but no way near as good as Gareth Bale. Not not Real Madrid Bale and not Tottenham Bale, neither. Anyway, guys, I think I just want to do one more thing before I end this episode. I'll probably do a couple packs before we end, but I kind of want to talk about fantasy football. Fantasy football is just the saving grace of football, okay? Because sometimes games are so boring, but if you're getting good fantasy points, it kind of saves it for you okay like if you're watching a terrible game of football but your fantasy team's doing well it makes it worth it so i'm gonna quickly hop onto my fantasy team guys and just see how well i've done i feel like i've done okay but not crazy i've been sort of mid i'm currently on 59 points but i'm pretty sure i'm gonna be on 65 points by the end of the weekend because one of the players that i had in the team didn't start that player being tony i'm pretty sure ivan tony is leaving brentford which i didn't know so yeah he didn't actually even get on the pitch he wasn't even on the sub bench thankfully on the bench i've got dunk okay so he gave me six points so I should be on 65 points which is okay it's not terrible it's not bad it's just somewhere in the middle I think but yeah in terms of like who I did well with this weekend boys uh Raya got eight points so that's pretty good uh Gabrielle six points that's okay Kwanzaa that was a bad one okay I was honestly thinking that Kwanzaa would be a little smart shrewd little signing uh for the fantasy team and honestly on paper it would have been because obviously Liverpool got a clean sheet so you'd think he'd get good points but he only got one point and I think it's because he got subbed off at half time I think you need to play a certain amount of minutes if you want the clean sheet bonus so he got one point which is not great Munoz got me four points so that's all right I suppose uh Bruno Fernandez only got me three points so I might take him out next week I'm not too sure Soberslai got me seven points I'm really happy about that because Soberslai is not too expensive on fantasy he's actually quite cheap and the way that Onslaught plays is that Dominic Soberslai is involved quite a lot in the attacking aspects like as opposed to how Klopp would play Klopp had Soberslai as more of a Jordan Henderson type of midfielder where he was just it was all energy and he was doing a lot of running um, and he would be involved in the attack but obviously he was, had a lot of defensive responsibilities as well. Onslaught has got him more sort of attacking as opposed to defending. He does defend but he, he's more attacking so that's why I've put him in there and he got me seven points so I'm very happy. We got Kudos in here who got me two points which is a little bit depressing because I actually thought Kudos played pretty well in his game so yeah two points is a bit shit. Uh, Diogo Jota got me 16 points which I'm very happy with because I did captain him. When Jota is fit he will be scoring goals okay it's just a question of how 
long can Jota stay fit for because Jota always gets injured. And then my front three guys, like I said, I've got Ivan Tony who didn't play, which is annoying. So I'm going to have to get rid of him, I think. Next to him, I've got Isaac who got me five points. Yeah, that's all right, I suppose. And then Harlan got seven points, which, yeah, that's not bad either. Oh, shit, we got 83 times 20. Come on, let's open that, boys. Oh, yes, go on. It's going to be... I don't know who that is, to be honest with you. I've got no bloody clue. I don't think it's that good, though. Pacho and who's behind it? It's a Tots. It's taking its time, so that could be good. I don't know who that is, to be honest. It is... Oh, God. So, yeah, all in all, boys, the fantasy team, it could have been better. It could have been worse. I think the main ones that I made mistakes on was, like, Kwanzaa, for example. If I if I took Kwanzaa out and, and put someone else in, I would have got a few more points, obviously. I think, as well, Bruno Fernandes, he's quite expensive, and I think I probably should keep him in, because I do feel like he will get goals and assists. He, he's a penalty taker as well, I'm pretty sure, for United. So, I think I'm going to keep him, but it wasn't the best weekend for him. It's annoying as well because he had good chances in that game. Like, he had at least two 1v1s in that game against Fulham. Scored neither of them, which really pissed me off. Yeah, let me know in the comments, guys. How have you done with your fancy teams this weekend? I want to know. But yeah, I think that's going to do it then, boys, for today. I've, I've ran out of things to talk about when it comes to football. Uh, let me know if you want to see more of these. I, I want to do more of these football episodes because they're quite fun. Other than that, though, boys, if you're new here, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one, alright? Peace.